My sister sabotaged my life for years. Now, I've cut her off for good, even if my family won't accept it. I, 33F, am the youngest of three siblings. Growing up, I always knew that my oldest sister, Olivia, never liked me. She had no issues with our middle sister, Hannah, but for some reason she fucking hated me from the moment I was born. Olivia was my first bully, tormenting me throughout my school years. When I reached my teenage years, I started discovering my individuality through punk clothing, dark makeup, and heavy metal. She would ridicule me in front of my friends and call me names like Maleficent. Every damn day with Olivia was challenging. She would scream in my face, punch me, or try to push me down the fucking stairs by sneaking up behind me. I was terrified to be around her. Our parents saw her mistreating me, but chose to stay out of it as much as possible. So they would tell me that sisters sometimes fight and that I should be more patient with Olivia since she was struggling to adjust to having siblings. When she moved out after getting a job, I finally felt liberated. My middle sister, Hannah, was much kinder and always supportive. She taught me how to put on makeup, bought me my first heels, and has continued to have a good relationship with me. Somehow, Olivia resented this and told Hannah several fucking times to stay away from me, but Hannah didn't listen. I thought that after Olivia moved out, she and I would have a much better relationship, but I was wrong. She eventually got married to her now husband, Jake. In my family, turning 18 is considered a big deal. When my sisters had their 18th birthdays, they threw parties with their friends and families and generally had a great time. This made me excited for my own 18th birthday, which was approaching. A week before my 18th, my middle sister called to tell me that Olivia was pregnant but hadn't announced it to everyone yet. I was happy for her, but then felt my stomach fucking drop as I realized she might use my birthday celebration for her announcement. Sure enough, she did. During my birthday party, Olivia showed up wearing a shirt that said New Mommy in Gold. I was fucking shocked to see this. While I had anticipated the possibility of her revealing the pregnancy on my birthday, I had hoped she would at least wait until I cut the cake. As expected, people started asking her about it, and she loudly announced her pregnancy. Everyone erupted in joy while Olivia soaked in all the fucking attention. I felt so awkward because my birthday celebration had turned into her pregnancy announcement. So when I congratulated her, she ignored me and continued talking to our relatives about how thrilled she and her husband were to become parents. I felt like crying because no one seemed to give a damn about celebrating me anymore. So I decided to walk out of my own fucking birthday party. Hannah ran after me, understanding how I felt. Later, my parents questioned why I walked out. And when I told them the reason, they reprimanded me, calling me childish and saying I should be happy for my sister. The thing was, I was happy for her, but she could have made the fucking announcement any other day. She chose to announce it on my birthday, knowing it would shift all focus to her, and she succeeded. Since that day, I decided to stop inviting Olivia to my birthday parties. Hannah was also cautious and kept her distance from Olivia to avoid being treated like me. Though when I was getting married to my then fiancé, George, I didn't want to invite Olivia to my wedding because I was terrified she would do something again to steal my spotlight. My parents, however, begged me to include her as a guest because they were worried that other relatives would gossip about us not getting along. For my parents' sake, I agreed and warned them to talk to Olivia to ensure she would be on her best behavior. George and I had saved our hard-earned money over the years to have our dream wedding, just like we always envisioned. The one thing I was most looking forward to was my wedding dress. I've always had issues with my self-esteem, so I wanted to feel like a million bucks. My dress cost over $900, which may not seem like much, but it was a lot for me, and I had worked hard to budget for it. I adored my dress. It had beading and intricate embroidery all over the bodice and hem, with designs trailing up and down the skirt. It made me feel like a princess, and I was ecstatic about it. I had shown the dress to Hannah, but not even my mom since I wanted to keep my look a surprise. The only problem was that I needed some alterations on my hip as I was a size smaller. Alterations can be expensive, so I asked my aunt, who I knew would be happy to help me. She agreed and asked me to bring the dress to her. I visited my aunt's place with my dress, and she took some of my measurements so she could alter the dress accordingly. She understood how precious the dress was and assured me she would work on it meticulously. So we chatted for a while, and I asked her not to share pictures of my dress with anyone. She promised that no one would ever know. My aunt was supposed to call me a week later when the alterations were done. A week passed, and there were no calls from her. I called multiple times, but she didn't answer, so I became anxious since she was quite old, so I thought something might have happened to her. As a last resort, Hannah and I drove to my aunt's place to check on her. My aunt opened the door looking quite grim. I asked her why she hadn't been picking up my calls. This is when she told me how she was so sorry for everything and started to cry. Hannah and I stood there, unable to comprehend what was happening. My aunt then took me inside her room turned work studio where she had kept my dress. I screamed in horror when I saw my dress was completely ruined. The bodice was torn in half, the beads were scattered everywhere, and the skirt was shredded. I almost collapsed in shock. Hannah asked my aunt what had happened and if she had done this to my dress. My aunt shook her head and explained that Olivia had visited her a few days ago with her dogs. She had told Olivia that my dress was with her and she was working on it. 
Apparently, when she went to get Olivia lunch, one of her dogs had accidentally gotten into the room. Olivia had begged my aunt not to tell me it was her fault. Since then, my aunt had been trying her best to fix the dress, but it was nearly impossible. She told me that the estimate to repair the dress would cost even more than the original price since the material was so high quality. All I could do was break down while Hannah tried to comfort me. My aunt looked heartbroken too as she kept apologizing repeatedly. I then told her she could have locked the doors and maybe the dog wouldn't have gotten in. However, my aunt said she had locked the doors, but somehow the dog still managed to get in. Hearing this, my blood ran cold. I realized that maybe Olivia had deliberately let the dogs in to destroy my dress. I was beyond devastated. So when I told my parents about the dress, my dad offered to buy me a wedding dress, telling me that since I hadn't taken any money from them for my wedding, I should at least allow him to buy me a new dress. I was heartbroken as I had been so sure that I would be getting married in my dream dress, but unfortunately, I had no other choice left. I informed my parents about my suspicion regarding Olivia, but they immediately tried to defend her and blame the dog. However, Hannah supported me and told my parents that we needed to talk to Olivia and get to the bottom of this. So if Olivia had truly and intentionally destroyed my wedding dress, then she would no longer be a part of my celebration. So the next day, I asked Olivia to come to our parents' place, where Hannah and I were driving as well, under the pretense that I wanted to discuss wedding plans with everyone. I knew Olivia wanted to be a bridesmaid, so she excitedly arrived without any suspicions. So I told her straight away that I'd found out everything from our aunt. I watched the color drain from Olivia's face as she stammered, trying to explain how her dogs are generally very obedient, but had somehow managed to sneak into the room. Hannah questioned her directly, if perhaps she was blaming her dog when the truth was that she was jealous of my dress and destroyed it. Olivia immediately began to yell at us, saying why would she ever be jealous of someone like me who had less than her. I then pointed out to her how she had always tried to one-up me throughout our childhood. Hearing this, Olivia scoffed and told me how I was being delusional and that she didn't even like my wedding dress. This is when we caught her in her lie. I asked her how she even disliked my dress when I had never shared pictures of it. My mom agreed and looked at her intently. Olivia began to stammer and say how when her dog destroyed the dress, she then saw it, but something felt off. My dad firmly asked her to stop lying and questioned her if she had been involved in destroying my dress. In the end, after she was cornered, Olivia finally spilled the truth. She tearfully acknowledged her jealousy and insecurities, confessing that she couldn't bear to see me happy on my wedding day. The revelation left my parents stunned grappling with the realization that their eldest daughter had intentionally sabotaged my happiness. She begrudgingly admitted that she has snuck into my aunt's room to see my dress and had left the door ajar, knowing her dog would do the rest of the work. She had then begged our aunt not to tell me anything, perhaps thinking she could get away with it. Our poor aunt had clearly been manipulated and had been worried about breaking the news to me since she didn't know how I would react. I was so pissed at Olivia that I wanted to choke her right there. Olivia started to tell me how she has never liked me ever since we were children, and even as an adult she can't help but continue to dislike me. Hannah defended me and told Olivia that she should have dealt with her emotions by going to therapy rather than destroying my things or bullying me. My dad, for the first time, stood up for me and told Olivia that he was disappointed in her. I was still angry and hurt, so I asked her to pay me $1.90 back for the dress since she had now publicly admitted her mistake. But Olivia seemed taken aback and told me how she did not have that kind of money, but I threatened to take her to court so we could settle this legally. My mom, torn between her two daughters, attempted to mediate between us. She told me that since my sister was apologizing to me, I should have more grace for her. However, I reiterated that I needed my money back since she and her dog were responsible for destroying my precious dress. In the midst of the confrontation, Hannah stood by my side offering support and emphasizing the gravity of Olivia's actions and yelled at Olivia that she needed to get over her jealousy. In the end, Olivia managed to cough up $1.200, telling me she didn't have the rest of the money and that, as her family, I should just let this go. Furious and hurt, I decided to cut ties with Olivia and uninvited her from my wedding, realizing that her envy had led her to destroy such a significant event of my life. My mom tried to mediate again, but this time both my dad and Hannah told her that Olivia had crossed a line and there was no going back. And with my wedding dress irreparably damaged, I had to choose a new one, which my dad paid for as he had promised. Despite the challenges, my wedding turned out well. Instead of dwelling on the negativity with Olivia, I chose to focus on my future life with my husband. I believe witnessing me getting married without her inclusion might have prompted Olivia to finally grasp the consequences of her actions. She sent me a bouquet of flowers congratulating me. However, I chose to ignore it and refrain from responding as I was still hurt and angry about what she had done to me. I stood by my decision and never reached out to her even though my mom would occasionally plead with me to forgive her because she is family. Years passed without any communication between us. Throughout all this, Hannah and I had a wonderful relationship and we would hang out all the time. Last year, I gave birth to my first child. My husband was with me in the delivery room and was my rock. Later, when I came back home, my parents came to visit me. 
They were happy to see my baby and spent some time with my son. Later, my mom insisted that enough was enough and that I should get back in touch with my sister. She told me how both I and Olivia were now mothers and we needed to get over our past so eventually our children could become close. I don't know if it was my pregnancy hormones or the happiness of being a mother, but I started to consider my mother's request. So when Olivia heard about my son, she called to congratulate me. This time, instead of letting it go to voicemail, I picked up. She was surprised that I wanted to talk to her, but I told her how I had been thinking a lot and that it seemed time to let bygones be bygones. So Olivia immediately agreed and apologized to me again. She expressed deep remorse for the hardship she had subjected me to all those years ago, revealing that she had come to comprehend her jealousy and mental health struggles through therapy. She assured me that going forward, she would be a better older sister to me and that she was going to help me and my son wherever she could. Seven, the new chapter one was entering as a first-time mother. I chose to forgive her for everything. So my primary focus was on ensuring my baby would grow up surrounded by boundless love. Since the birth of my son, Olivia has indeed stood by her promise and been there for me in every possible way. She has offered assistance wherever she could, and Hannah, much like myself, has been pleasantly surprised by Olivia's transformed behavior. So the three of us have gradually started spending time together, and it genuinely appeared that Olivia had overcome her past issues. But now coming to the incident that happened, my son just turned one and we threw a small party to celebrate. So the party was going well, we had ordered a cute cake, the decorations were on point, and everyone was having a good time. As my husband and I brought out the cake for my son, everyone started to sing happy birthday. Suddenly, I watched Olivia walk towards the DJ and grab the mic from him. People turned to look at her as she then announced to the room that she was pregnant again, and had waited until now to share this happy news. I stood there in shock, absorbing her words, and it all seemed like a bad joke to me. The memories of my 18th birthday came flooding back when I was first upstaged by her, and now my son's first birthday was ruined by her announcement again. The whole room became quiet, with everyone looking around awkwardly, not knowing how to react. My husband stood there motionless, not quite understanding why Olivia would do something like this. But Olivia then walked up to me in front of everyone and announced that since she had always been there for me with my first child, she expected me to be there for her second child and help her take care of the baby. Olivia continued to say how she would want nothing more than a grand baby shower organized by me for her baby. I was shocked to say the least and looked at her blankly. She then handed me a small envelope and told me that she was looking forward to seeing what her baby shower would look like. I opened the envelope to find a to-do list for her baby shower. I couldn't believe her audacity. Anger surged within me, fueled by years of pent-up frustration, and I had enough of her behavior. My family watched as I started tearing the list into shreds right in front of her. So that's when all hell broke loose. Olivia's smirk vanished, replaced by a shocked expression, and then the waterworks started. She burst into tears, further drawing the attention of everyone at the party. My dad sternly asked Olivia's husband to take her away, while my mom tried to defend her, saying that as my son's aunt, she deserved to be here for the celebration. Meanwhile, Hannah, my ever-supportive sister, shot me an understanding look and decided to take matters into her own hands. She held Olivia and politely escorted her out so we could try to continue with the party. Unlike my family, who was used to Olivia's antics, my husband looked utterly shocked by everything that was happening. He was obviously angry at my sister for stealing the limelight from our son, but he was furious at me as well, V. J. Not just for tearing up the list, but for causing a scene on what was supposed to be a joyous occasion. In his eyes, I had ruined our son's first birthday, and he didn't hold back in expressing his disappointment to me later in private. As the party continued, the tension still lingered. My parents tried to play peacemakers with my relatives, but it was evident that the damage was done. It was awkward after Olivia's announcement. Eventually, we cut the cake, had our meal, and the guests left slowly. In the aftermath of the party, my husband and I had a heated argument. He believed that I should have taken the high road by waiting for the guests to leave before addressing the issue, since Olivia's actions had already overshadowed our son's special day. I argued back that she would always continue to do this unless I finally stood up to her and humiliated her in front of everyone. I just couldn't let her turn every significant moment in my life into a platform for her own agenda. So I stood up for myself against my sister. Did I really ruin my son's first birthday, or was I justified in standing up for myself against years of mistreatment? Update 1 Wow, thank you all for the overwhelming response. I didn't expect this to blow up. I appreciate the support and the different perspectives. Some of you suggested talking to Olivia and apologizing to her for humiliating her so publicly, while others think she's the one who owes me an apology. I refuse to apologize because this wasn't my fault. She has continuously disrespected me and is now starting to disrespect my son. So why can't she announce her pregnancies at her own parties? She doesn't have any need to take the limelight away from me and my family, but she continues to do that since she just can't get over her inferiority complex for some reason, and I am absolutely tired of her antics. I plan on sitting down with my husband and explaining everything to him after he calms down so he understands my whole history with Olivia. Update 2 It's been a week since my last update. 
I sat down with my husband and explained everything to him when we both had time. Firstly, I told him about my childhood and teenage years when my sister would bully me and humiliate me in front of my friends. His eyes widened in shock as he had no idea previously that she was so mean to me growing up. But of course I had mentioned a few instances here and there, but I had never gone into specifics with him. So then I told him about my 18th party where she had pulled the same stunt with me and how humiliated it made me feel. I explained to him that this had been happening to me my entire life and that she couldn't let me have the spotlight any day. He was shocked after hearing everything from my perspective. He told me that I had mentioned the wedding dress and how Olivia had ripped it up. He thought it was just a one-time thing. He got along well with his sisters, so he had no idea how terrible Olivia had been to me all my life. So he started to apologize to me for being angry and told me that he had no idea that I had such deep wounds. He explained to me that he was just excited for our son's birthday, but with the drama between me and my sister, he felt that it ruined the entire mood of the party, to which I completely agreed. I told him that I never wanted our son's first birthday party to go this way and that I just couldn't take her antics anymore. They hugged, and I knew that all was forgiven between us. My husband then told me firmly that we needed to cut things off with Olivia because he was scared that she would treat our son this way and humiliate him in the future as well. He told me that our son might start to notice this while growing up and he didn't want our son around Olivia. I agreed with him and informed him that I was already planning on cutting her off. I will be informing my parents about this as well so that they know that both I and my husband have decided to do this and nothing can change our minds. Meanwhile, since the party, Olivia has tried to call me and sent me several messages, which I have refused to open because at this point, no matter what she says, our relationship cannot be repaired or get any worse than this. I have no idea if she blames me for ruining her pregnancy announcement or is apologetic, because regardless of what she says, I won't believe her anymore. I had always foolishly forgiven her before, but when it comes to my son, I can't let my sister ruin his life too. My son might not remember his first birthday, but my husband and I will remember the day forever. So what my sister did will forever be etched onto our memories. Hence, I will block her so she can never again itch a chance to ruin our lives. The update three, as I had mentioned earlier, I called my parents to talk to them regarding my decision to cut off Olivia forever. So my dad replied that he completely understood my decision because after what she had done, he didn't want to talk to her as well. My mother started to protest, saying that I was being too cruel to my sister and I should never say never. Hearing her say this, something snapped inside me. This is when I finally lost it at my mom. After watching her treat Olivia as her golden child for years, I was done being pushed aside. So I started to tell her the various things that Olivia had done to me over the years and how she had failed to protect me as a parent. I reminded her that she should have been a better parent and either asked Olivia to stop or taken her to therapy instead of letting her get away with everything. This might have made our relationships better and we could have continued to be sisters, but that didn't happen so she should stop asking me to forgive her. I told her firmly that if she didn't respect my and my husband's decision to cut off Olivia permanently, then we would have no choice but to cut her off as well. Hearing this, my mom started crying on the other line, telling me that I was being too cruel and that she could never live without her grandchildren. She apologized to me and told me that although she didn't support my decision to cut off a family member permanently, she would keep her opinions to herself in the future. I wasn't convinced by this and told my dad that for the time being, only he was allowed to see my son. My mother protested, but I cut her off, saying that she was clearly supporting a bully, so she was a bully as well. Hence, I didn't want my son to grow up around such adults. I asked her to think long and hard about how she had failed me as a parent and whether she would like it if she were in my shoes. Since our call, my mom has sent me several messages saying that she can't choose between her children. The thing is, I never asked her to choose between her children but her blind support for my sister kind of rubs me the wrong way. Obviously, I will not cut off contact with my mom completely, but I can't help but hope that one day she realizes how wrong she was for supporting my sister and not standing up for me. Update 4, it's been 8 months since my last update. I know a lot of you wanted to know if anything changed between me and my sister. I have continued to keep my distance from Olivia and have blocked her from all social media accounts and phones. When our parents have family events, even though she is there, I completely ignore her. After publicly humiliating her, I think she is wary of approaching me, and I act like she doesn't exist anyway. Hannah has also cut off Olivia completely. At first, she didn't want anything to do with her after my son's birthday party, but my mom pressured her to stay in touch with Olivia. So then Olivia started to behave weirdly with her as well, which made Hannah quickly realize that Olivia was starting to treat her the same way she used to treat me, so she cut her off and blocked her as well. Hannah and I have continued to have a wonderful relationship and she will be the only aunt to my children, which I'm quite happy and comfortable with. I decided to join therapy recently to work my past, realizing that I should have cut off Olivia long ago and never forgiven her. The therapy has been a transformative journey, helping me understand the impact of my sister's actions on my mental health and self-esteem. It has also empowered me to prioritize my own well-being and focus on building a positive future for myself, my husband, and my child. To so looking back at the incident during my son's first birthday, 
I recognized the significance of standing up for myself, even if it meant causing a scene. I refused to apologize for defending my boundaries and protecting my family from further toxicity. As for my husband, all is good between us. He has come to understand the depth of my sister's toxicity. Our relationship has grown stronger as we navigate parenthood together, focusing on creating a positive and nurturing environment for our son. And I'm lucky every day to have a partner and best friend like him.